The court is now back in session, the and uh, the chamber gives the floor to Victor Copper to resume the presentation. You may not proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Maître Copper, merci, Monsieur le Président. Um, as said before uh, the break, Comme indiqué avant I will la pause, begin je vais commencer uh, with the most fundamental issue. La question la plus fondamentale pour comprendre le Kampuchea démocratique, c'est une question que Nunchea a particulièrement mise en évidence. Il s'agit de la menace existentielle que constituait le Vietnam pour le Kampuchea démocratique. Dans leur mémoire, les coprocureurs tentent de dépeindre Nunchea comme un raciste, quote, en citant sa supposée, je cite, haine et son supposé mépris pour le Vietnam. L'accusation présente to la résistance du Kampuchea démocratique face aux constantes attaques illégales du Vietnam comme étant, je cite, des empiètements en territoire vietnamien. They ridiculously suggest in de façon their brief ridicule, dans son mémoire, l'accusation insinue que le camp Vietnam démocratique a leurré le Vietnam en négociant dans le seul but quote unquote, de, gain time cite, to prepare gagner du temps pour préparer des forces for en vue later. de poursuivre l'agression plus tard. Ultimately, the enfin, l'accusation présente le PCK comme l'instigateur paranoïaque et irrationnel du conflit armé avec le Vietnam. Pour citer les termes employés par l'accusation dans ses conclusions finales, je cite, « Pol Pot et ceux qui étaient autour de lui ont agi sous l'effet d'un délire qui leur a fait penser qu'ils étaient exposés au risque imminent de se faire dominer par le Vietnam. » À l'inverse, L'accusation présente le Vietnam dans ses conclusions finales comme ayant réagi de façon pacifique et patiente. Et d'après l'accusation, le Vietnam a veillé à l'extrême à ne pas provoquer le régime du Kampuchea démocratique, appliquant une politique prudente et de conciliation afin d'apaiser les tensions en faisant passer le différent du champ de bataille à la table des négociations. C'est un argument qui était prévisible, comme l'a déjà indiqué Maître Sovana. In which the Manichaean narrative la toute was formed première façon dont le discours manichéen a pris forme, cela a été la propagande vietnamienne Vietnam's qui visait à légitimer ce qui était de la part du Vietnam une Clearly, invasion manifestement illégale au Kampuchea démocratique. So much so that the trial chamber Clairement, also cette takes propagande a avait réussi. In the case judgment, a semblé adopter example, une position similaire dans le jugement 002-01. Par exemple, la Chambre a semblé sceptique le Vietnam. La Chambre a aussi appelé le Vietnam un pays que le CPK a appelé envers le Kampuchea démocratique. La Chambre a également appelé le Vietnam comme un pays que le PCK a considéré comme étant un rival et une menace dans la mesure où Mr. President, Il as we have set out in our brief, and we'll summarize here, nothing, mémoire, nothing could be farther, further from the truth. Vietnam bien, was an imperialist vérité. aggressor, Le Vietnam plain était and un aggressor impérialiste. nothing Pure but a simple. proxy of the Soviet Union, Il de Union uh, according to um, a man who died um, three weeks ago today.
Zbigniew Brzezinski, the former U.S. national security advisor. He called Vietnam nothing but a proxy of the Soviet Union. So a union which would invade Afghanistan only one year later. In which invaded Czechoslovakia uh, uh, only 10 years earlier as president. The proof that Vietnam was an imperialist aggressor is not only in the fact that they brutally invaded and occupied Cambodia for more than a decade, but in all the other actions they took along the way. As I will discuss. Mais ils l'ont également prouvé par d'autres actions qu'ils ont menées entre temps. Their colonial designs for Cambodia have been ignorantly whitewashed by this tribunal. In just the way, Vietnam would have hoped. Leurs dessins ont été blanchis par ce tribunal par ignorance. Now, of course, the co-prosecutors dismiss the threat of Vietnam as a CPK delusion. But unfortunately for them, the CPK were by no means the only people to identify that threat, that existential threat. The late King Father Norodom Sihanouk was always very focal about it. In 1963 already, he said that no Vietnamese leader would, quote, sleep peacefully until he has succeeded in pushing Cambodia towards annihilation, having made it first go through the stages of slavery, end of quote. The late King Father Sihanouk echoed this message in countless meetings and documents throughout his lifetime. I refer you to a brief. For, for, for example, in letters he sent to the Vietnamese Prime Minister Pham Van Dong, he said that Vietnam's invasion of DK was quote unquote colonization undertaken, undertaken not out of altruistic motives, but in the spirit of domination and conquest. And the co prosecutors also ignore that as all Cambodians in this courtroom, and presumably also outside of this courtroom, will surely agree to. And is that that Vietnam has had ambitions for Cambodia for at least a thousand years, and which have been fulfilled over centuries. For example, Vietnam has annexed Cambodian territory including Champa and Kampuchea Krom. And it continues to covet territory throughout Southeast Asia, for instance, in the South China Sea. Now, Mr. President, the modern version of Vietnam's imperialist ambitions under Vietnam's foremost leaders, including Ho Chi Minh, and was to establish an Indo-Chinese federation. And this Indo-Chinese federation would merge Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos into an economically and politically integrated state within which Cambodia and Laos would have served as slave states. I'm paraphrasing the late King Father here. There is clear evidence that throughout the decade, Vietnam concretely sought to establish that in the Chinese Federation. For example, in 1976, Vietnam's leader, Le Dun, said that Quote, sooner or later, Kampuchea will be with Vietnam. The Khmers do not have another way out. End of quote. Defectors from Vietnamese leadership 
reported that Vietnam trained its party leaders and cadres that the Indo Chinese Federation would be established by the end of the 20th century. And throughout 1975 and 1976, Vietnam carried out numerous acts of aggression against Cambodia. And despite what the co-prosecutors would have you believe, the reality is that it was Cambodia that sought to calm the, the situation and to negotiate. Vietnam was the one disinterested in peace. And they used propaganda to try to twist international opinion into believing that it was decay that had started the aggression. And although history on this subject has been rewritten uh, today in our brief, as I sincerely uh, believe, at the time, even the New York Times did not buy Vietnam's story, reporting that Vietnam, quote, may be planning to make an empire of the region, end of quote. And of course, they were right. On paper, Mr. President, the CPK and North Vietnam, and of course later the whole of Vietnam, were officially allies. But in reality, however, the CPK was constantly betrayed by its so-called friend. And as Nguyen Chia has said during uh, the time of democratic Kampuchea and maintains today, the worst betrayal of all was when North Vietnam sided with the United States at the 1973 Paris Peace Agreement to force the CPK to accept the United States and late King Father Sihanouk to negotiate with the Khmer Republic. Of course, the CPK refused to do so. Late King Father Sihanouk refused to do so, which then led the United States carpet bombing Cambodia for 200 days and nights as punishment, causing at least 20, maybe 30, maybe even 40 times more deaths than during the evacuation of cities in 1975. For the interpreters, I'm leaving um, my presentation here a bit and reacting to what was said um, by Mr. Lysak the day before yesterday. If we take the new numbers of alleged deaths at S21, the new numbers which we dispute, uh, presented by the prosecution, the United States caused at least 10 times more deaths than the CPK allegedly did in S21. And Mr. President, no one was ever held responsible for this. And as a matter of fact, one of the architects of these war crimes, these atrocities, Henry Kissinger, is still alive today. Now that, Mr. Lysak, co-prosecutors is what Nguyen Chia rightfully calls victor's justice. Et c'est ce que Nguyen Chia appelle la justice des vainqueurs, monsieur Lysak. Back, Mr. President, to monsieur imperialist Président, Vietnam. Je reviens à, au Vietnam impérialiste. Witnesses have also testified about clashes between Vietnam, Viet Cong, and CPK forces in the early 1970s over the border demarcation and of the Viet Cong or for the Vietnamese stealing military supplies meant for Cambodia. Indeed, it is clear that Vietnam paved the way for the Indo-Chinese Federation from the very beginning. The Indo-Chinese Communist Party it established in Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos was always Vietnam-dominated and a political blueprint 
for what the Indo-Chinese Federation hopes to be. De ce qu'espérait être la Fédération And in addition, from 1954, many Cambodian communists were given safe haven in Hanoi. Bon nombre de communistes cambodgiens the co prosecutors claim in their brief offrir, that when these so called uh, Khmer Viet Minh returned to Cambodia, les, le they were wrongly regarded as internal enemies. Dit que lorsque ces soi-disant Khmer Viet Minh sont rentrés au Cambodge, ils ont été considérés à tort comme des ennemis internes. Mais la vérité est qu'ils ont été formés pour finalement devenir For instance, des collaborateurs after their internes au Vietnam. From Hanoi, Par exemple, many became liaison officers between the CPK bon and Vietnam who reported to Vietnam rather than to their fellow Cambodians. Maybe I should step away for a moment from my brief as well, Mr. President, because it just struck, struck me that right now um, in, in Washington, D.C., there's a big upheaval over mere contacts between yeah, members of the Trump administration and Russians. It seems that they don't talk about anything else. Of course, the same situation would apply here. If you're talking directly to your enemy, that is something of very grave concern. Back to my brief, uh, Mr. Preoccupation. President. Ultimately, and as uh, Nguyen Chia has said correctly, um, from 1960 to 1979, Vietnam employed every trick available to destroy the revolution of the Kampuchean people and the development in Cambodia. And key tricks they used were deceptive negotiation tactics and manipulation of public opinion. For instance, in, in 1967, Vietnam announced that it would respect the Brevier line border with Cambodia, which already favored Vietnam. And in May 76, however, it reneged on that promise. Why? As its chief negotiator Pourquoi? later revealed, because Vietnam had learned that there might be petroleum deposits in that part of the sea. And Vietnam, of course, wanted them. Let me give you another example. In February 1978, Vietnam proposed terms to end the war with Cambodia. However, they did so knowing that DK could never accept the unreasonable terms Or, fait, and that this would be a way to shift blame for the conflict of the DK, to the DK, sorry. And yet another example of Vietnam's deceptions was that Vietnam would frequently make completely unfounded complaints of alleged DK incursions into Cambodian territory just before it planned to invade DK. This apparently has convinced the co-prosecutors who try to present the armed conflict as entirely DK provoked. Now, Mr. President, it is natural, logical, that when a country's survival is at risk, its policies will be defined by the threat to its security. Is this the case si in the world menacée, today, anywhere? And this was, of course, the, the case during le Democratic Kampuchea. Le cas le Kampuchea and documents on the case files show Des that the existential de threat de of Vietnam was understandably at the top of the CPK's policy making uh, considerations. Des considerations du PCK en matière d'établissement de politique. And of course, it goes without saying that this threat was the driving force behind the CPK's defense and security policy. However, the same is true of the CPK's establishment of cooperatives and work sites, which also focused on the need to develop national capacity to ensure. Survival. 
la capacité nationale Ultimately, the CPK stressed the need for Democratic Kampuchea to maintain its independence and to strengthen its ability to resist enemies. There's nothing strange about this, although the Manichaean narrative always tries to suggest that there is. Independence and autonomy are simply cornerstones of what it means for a country to be sovereign. But in any case, DK was far from uh, isolationist. Its foreign policy specifically sought to develop international relations, which it had with at least 100 countries, in order to minimize the threat Vietnam post it. And Mr. President, speaking of other countries, it is important to point out that the co-prosecutor's argument that the CPK uh, was delusional is undermined, further undermined by the fact that many other countries spoke of the threat of Vietnam to Cambodia and the region as well. For instance, numerous Chinese leaders, including, for, it, for, for instance, its one-time premier, Zhu Enlai, had discussed the threat long before DK was even established. And in 1978, its chairman, Deng Xiaoping, even publicly referred to Vietnam as, quote, the hooligans of the East. A publiquement traité le Vietnam de délinquants de l'Est. The hooligans of the East, Mr. President. That's what we are talking about. Monsieur le Président. And many other countries echoed these very serious concerns. Beaucoup d'autres pays ont fait écho à ces préoccupations. At the time, U.S. President Gerald Ford and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, who I just mentioned, discussed these concerns at length with. For instance, Indonesian President Suharto. Australian diplomats expressed similar fears, as did diplomats of many of Vietnam's Southeast Asian neighbors, from Malaysia to Singapore to Burma to Thailand, and even Vietnam's own allies had noticed Vietnam's growing Vietnam, imperialist over ambitions over Cambodia, propres, including the Soviet Union Vietnam, and East um, Germany. Les que nous le sur le Cambodge, et and moreover, in July 1977, July Vietnam succeeded in securing Laos as one of its subjugated states. A réussi à mettre le Laos sous the two countries propre. signed a so-called uh, friendship treaty linking their national construction and defense, which in reality gave Vietnam what China called overall control over Laos. And in, in 1977, having secured half of the Indo-Chinese Federation puzzle with Laos, Vietnam turned its full attention to Democratic Cambodia. And contrary to the co-prosecutor's claims, it was not DK-led attacks that escalated the armed conflict with Vietnam that year. It was really the opposite. Carefully orchestrated provocations by Vietnam. It's, 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 it's important to, to understand that, that DK military reports, contemporaneous reports, they never avoid mentioning uh, military actions from the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea against Vietnamese forces when they happen. They always write about clashes. And early reports in 1977 contain no such mention because they just didn't happen. Or, dans les rapports de 1977, Several il a ranking military witnesses genre, who testified here in this courtroom agreed attaques. that aggression Plusieurs came squarely from Vietnam and from Vietnam only. For instance, they detailed how Vietnam attacked Vietnam. DK from 
all directions in March, April, and May 1977. They describe how Vietnam would preemptively evacuate their people from an area they plan to attack, showing just how premeditated their, acts, their attacks on DK were. And they also make it clear that DK's policy was one of self-defense and containment. This president, you might recall, Battalion Commander Ying Pan, who is now a general in the Cambodian Army right now, as we speak. Battalion Commander Ying Pan said that their forces could only push Vietnam's forces back to the border and not cross it. And Battalion Commander Mark Chun agreed, Mark Chun, saying the strategy was to defend corroborer. the country if necessary through counter-attacks. By the way, Mr. President, these are two witnesses en passant, that Monsieur you have President, relied upon extensively uh, in your trial judgment in case 002-01. Énormément dans votre jugement dans le cadre du premier procès du dossier 002. What these witnesses say, what these very credible and reliable ce witnesses dit, say, Mr. President, is of course fiable, confirmed et bien sûr confirmé, uh, in what Son Sen himself told the Vision 920, par Son Sen and I quote, dans ses we won't be the ones who 920. make trouble, Il a dit, but nous we must pas ceux defend qui our des territory, problèmes. absolutely, end of Mais quote. Nous devons défendre notre territoire absolument. What is paranoid about that, Mr. President? Où I fail to see it. Dedans, Monsieur le Président? Je n'en vois pas. Ultimately, there is simply no truth en to the co-prosecutor's argument il a simplement aucune lance and de the vérité dans narrative that the CPK imagined the threat of Vietnam and that Vietnam was Cambodia's eventual le savior. Le avait la Vietnam, du Vietnam et que le Vietnam était worked carefully persistently and deceptively before and during DK to rob Cambodia of its autonomy and territory. And as I will discuss later, this came to a head in late 1978 when Vietnam brutally and illegally invaded Cambodia for a second time. Le a brutalement et de manière illégale envahi le Cambodge pour la deuxième fois. Mr. President, so far, Monsieur le Président, I have focused more on Vietnam's uh, external efforts to secure control over Cambodia. Sur les du Vietnam pour le However, what du is Cambodge, critical to Nguyen Chi's case ce qui est pour la is question that in reality, réalité, Vietnam used a double-edged sword, le a un which used external tranché. efforts as only a secondary strategy. Se the main strategy Vietnam adopted was an internal one, recruiting people from the very top of the CPK to serve as its collaborators who would overthrow the CPK and the legitimate DK government from within. And this, of course, makes perfect sense when you consider how deceptive Vietnam was when it came to Cambodia and how much it sought to manipulate international opinion about what was happening. Internal collaborators provided political cover. And they could give Vietnam what some would today call a plausible deniability. They would disguise, they could disguise what was in reality naked aggression by Vietnam with the, with the appearance of noble internal quote unquote freedom fighting. It, in, in, in presenting, Mr. President, in presenting the story in our brief of the crocodile, as we call it, we try to make this double strategy uh, conceptually easier to understand by calling Vietnam's internal collaborators plan 
Um, the primary plan, plan le plan A, des collaborateurs internes du Vietnam, le plan and primaire we refer A, to Vietnam's external efforts, et les efforts um, externes du Vietnam, to what we call plan B. Nous l'avons appelé plan B. Plan B in part, déjà décrit en partie le plan B. Part of my 